Hello, this is Hands-On Auto DevOps with GitLab CI. This is Section 4, Application Quality and Monitoring. In this section, we'll look at some additional features we can add to our DevOps pipeline in order to test and improve the quality of our application. Now, there's a lot of things we could add to our DevOps pipeline. I uh, can't possibly go through them all, but I tried to give a good selection so that I would show how to add these kinds of things to a DevOps pipeline, talk about why we might do that, and then give you some useful examples so you can do it for your own applications. We'll look at integration and functional testing, analyzing code quality, dynamic application security testing, application metrics collection, and application monitoring with Prometheus. Integration and functional testing, in this video, we'll look at declaring services in builds, we'll look at passing environment variables to our services, and we'll look at defining service aliases. One of the important differences between a unit test or a small-scale test and our integration or our functional test is the scope. We would like to test more than just one piece of our application. We want to test how the parts integrate with each other, and we also want to test from the perspective of the user, the functional behavior of the application, exactly what the application should do from a user's perspective. Now, in the case of our Node.js to-do application, it's a very simple application, but we can test its integration with the underlying Postgres database, which means when we run the test, we want to have an instance of Postgres running and available for the test to use. But we don't want that to be our main production database, we don't want to pollute that with additional data, so we want a separate instance. Now we could deploy that out to um, some kind of deployment environment like Kubernetes, as we saw in the last section when we looked at review apps, um, but we can do the same kind of thing right there in our GitLab CI build itself using the concept of services. A service is an extra container that GitLab CI will run for us as part of our build or test process. Um, and it makes that extra container available to the main container uh, so that it can access it. So it's perfect for this kind of thing. Let's go ahead and we'll look at an example. So here we have our GitLab CI.yaml file for our kube deploy repository. And you can see we're looking at the test 10 job, which is one that we've used for a number of our examples. This time I want to focus on these two sections here, the services and the variables. So where we have this services section, we're telling GitLab CI, I've already specified that I want this test to run inside a node 10 container image. So I want you to find that image, pull it down, run a Docker container based on it, and that's where I want the actual main part of the script to happen. That's where I want the code to be checked out. But with the services section, we tell GitLab CI, I would also like you to pull down the Postgres version 10 image. I would like you to run an instance of that, and I would like you to make that individual service available to my main test container. Now, the way it'll do that is it will pull that image down, it will run it, it will actually look at the image itself, um, it will identify any network ports that that particular image is uh, exposing. Um, that's something that's defined in the Docker file that we create when this particular Postgres image is created. In this case, Postgres is exposing port 5432. And so GitLab CI will wait until something is listening at port 5432. At that point, it will go ahead and it will start the main container. Now, if we're going to run a Postgres database, we need some way to configure the database, the username, the password that we want created. That's how Postgres works when we run it from a Docker image. So in order to do that, we need to pass in environment variables. What GitLab CI allows us to do is any of the environment variables that we declare in this block, not only are these passed into our main container, but they are also passed into any of the services containers that we declare. So that could be just this individual service container like you see here, or because this is a list, we could actually declare multiple services and use them all from our main test container. And all those variables would be passed into all of those service containers so that they could be used. The last thing you'll note is the use of this alias. 
If we don't specify a name here, then if we leave this line out, then GitLab CI will choose a name based on the name of the image. Now in this case, that would just be Postgres, which would be pretty reasonable. But if we had some private image we were pulling from a private registry, it would build a much longer name based on all of the host name components of that private image. So, you know, it's probably best to just get in the habit of defining an alias for all your services so you can be certain as to what the name is that uh, we can call it by. Because we do define this alias, in our main test container, we'll be able to reference DB as a host name for our Postgres database. So we can point our Node.js application to a host called DB that will be running Postgres and it will be able to find the database there. The way that that works is that uh, GitLab CI configures a Docker link. That Docker link ultimately results in an update to the Etsy hosts file right inside our Docker container. Uh, we can illustrate that with a little bit of an example and it will all show in detail how services work. So we'll add a line to this script that just does a printout of the contents of the Etsy hosts file. We'll go ahead and we'll save that off and uh, we'll push it and we'll see the resulting build. So I've gone ahead and I've pushed that to the remote repository that will kick off a build and we'll come back when that build is finished. Okay, so here we are back looking at our completed and successful Node 10 job. The first thing you'll notice is that it has pulled this Postgres 10 service down. It's pulled the image down and started that service. And then you see this waiting for services to be up and running. That's the part that I talked about where it inspects the Docker image, identifies that it should be listening on port 5432, waits until it is, and then when that's complete, it then goes ahead and pulls down the Node 10 image, starts the Docker container based on that image, and runs our main test. And you can see that because we used that alias in our Etsy hosts, we printed that out. We have a line right here that identifies not only the Postgres, which was the default name, but it also uses the alias of DB that we specified to tell our test container that it can reach out to the Postgres server at this particular IP address. Uh, so this obviously is an internal IP address that's specific to this particular run of Docker not something that would be available from an external source. So as a result, when we run our Node.js test, the very first thing that we do after we finish the Node install is we do a DB migrate, and you can see that it's actually able to successfully connect to the Postgres database. It's then able to also use the Postgres database during the test itself so that we have a true integration test where we're testing the integration not just of our Node.js application, but also the way that it stores data and retrieves data from the Postgres database. So that concludes our look at integration and functional testing using services in GitLab CI.